Hi, and welcome back to my videos for Physical Chemistry 1. In the last video, we derived four different equations called Maxwell relations. These tie together the entropy and the temperature, pressure, and volume of a system. The reason why the Maxwell relations are important and useful is because they give us a way of relating the entropy to other, more easily measured properties of a system. And even better, the Maxwell relations apply even to real gases and systems that aren't isolated from their surroundings. This makes Maxwell relations applicable to almost any system we might want to study. So today, I want to talk about how we use the Maxwell relations to study chemical systems. Let's start with this equation. This was the first Maxwell relation we derived, and we saw in the last video that we get this by starting with the Helmholtz free energy. However, now that we have this Maxwell relation, we don't need to know anything about the Helmholtz free energy in order to use it. One of the most handy things we can do with this equation is use it to write a new equation for the entropy, which is usually a difficult property to measure. Here's how we do it. First, we'll move dV to the right side of the equation. That way, we'll have the entropy all by itself on the left. Of course, ds implies that we have an infinitesimally small change in the entropy, and in a real chemical process, the change in entropy will be finite, so we need to change this to delta s. We do that by taking the integral of the right side. The variable of integration is the volume, so the limits of the integral are v1 and v2. This might look like a difficult integral to solve because of the partial derivative, but it's actually much easier than you might think. For example, suppose the system we're looking at is an ideal gas. In that case, we can use the ideal gas law. If we solve for the pressure, we get this. And now, we can take the partial derivative with respect to the temperature, which is just nr over v. We can now plug that expression for the partial derivative into our integral. Since n and r are both constants, we take them out of the integral, and when we now solve the integral, we get this. So, now we have an equation for the entropy, and it only depends on the moles and the volume of the gas, both of which are easy to measure. And actually, this is an equation that we actually derived before, way back in video 21, although we got the equation using a different method at that time. Notice that we could even use this expression to get the entropy for a non-ideal gas. For example, we could use the van der Waals equation instead of the ideal gas law to get an expression for P. If we do that, we'll follow the same procedure as before. First, we solve for P, which gives us this. Now, we take the partial derivative with respect to T, which gives us this equation, which isn't too complicated. We can plug this into the integral and solve it, which gives us this result. So we just use a Maxwell relation to find two useful equations for the entropy, one for an ideal gas and one for a gas that obeys the van der Waals equation. Let's see what we can do with another of the Maxwell relations, this one, which we originally got in the last video by starting with an equation for the Gibbs free energy. Once again, we'll start by getting ds by itself on the left side of the equation. Now, we'll change it to delta s by taking the integral. This time, the variable of integration is p, the pressure. We now need to get rid of the partial derivative. If the system is an ideal gas, we can use the ideal gas law. We solve for the volume and then take the partial derivative with respect to temperature. When we do, we get this. Now we can plug that expression into our integral. When we solve it, we get this expression. This is another expression for the entropy that allows us to calculate entropy by measuring a simple property of the system, in this case, the pressure. There's one more especially useful expression we can get thanks to Maxwell relations. Back when we were deriving the Maxwell relation we got from the Gibbs free energy in the last video, one of the equations we got as an intermediate step was this one. If we rearrange the expression to solve for dg, we get this. 
we can change the left side to delta g by taking the integral of the right side. We can't solve this integral yet because v isn't a constant. Remember, the partial derivative we started with told us that we had conditions of constant temperature, not constant volume. If the system is an ideal gas, we can solve the ideal gas law for v. If we now substitute this for v in the integral, we can solve it. The number of moles, r, and the temperature are all constants, so we can take them out of the integral. And solving the resulting expression gives us this. Notice, this equation is only correct for isothermal processes because the partial derivative we started with had constant t. Notice that this equation that we got is similar to the one we got for entropy just a few minutes ago. That similarity makes a lot of sense. Remember, in video 28, we had this equation. As we learned in a few different earlier videos, delta H is zero for an isothermal process. And since the partial derivative we started with was specifically for constant temperature, we know this is an isothermal process. That means our old expression for delta G changes to this. So it makes sense that the expression we got today for the Gibbs free energy is just equal to the one we got for the entropy times negative T. You might notice that all the equations we got today assume that our chemical system consists of gases. But what happens if our system is made up of non-gases, or if the system actually changes its phase during the process? That's a very common situation, so we'll talk about that for the next couple of videos. But that's enough new material for today. I hope you'll join me again for the next video, but until then, have a good week.